Yes, yes, Psycho! Finally, a quinky character that I can truly fuck with and call my favorite. I love her. I love Psycho. I'm gonna say that right now. I've been waiting for her, and I'll get into why. It's not. You see, I'm moving Sasaki out of the quinky thing. Like, it's Kaneki, right? It's basically Kaneki for all intents and purposes. Sans the memories. It's what Kaneki would be like. The meaner's there, the personality is all there. Um, and the only thing is he's kind of more mild-mannered because he hasn't had, he in his mind, he doesn't have that experience of all the trauma that Kaneki went through, all the torture, all the, you know, dynamics of reconciling his ghoul self and everything like that, the Kakuja, um, insanity, all those things hardened Kaneki um, and made him into the person that he's become. Um, whereas Sasaki doesn't have any of that, but he still fucking goes in because that right there, you know, the combat prowess, the battle prowess, that's all muscle memory. Once you go in, you're going in for life. You don't lose that. It's, it's a common thing with people with amnesia um, in battle, anime, and manga. If they have amnesia and they were beasts before, they're still gonna beast. They just won't remember shit. So, I love Sasaki because basically Kaneki sans all that stuff, still the same person, genuinely. Um, so of course I love him. Of course I love him. Um, plus it's just Kaneki. It, at the end of the day it's Kaneki, so of course I love him. But I, I'm moving on. I'm talking about the Quinky. When I refer to the Quinkies, it's really the four. Previously three, now four, because I've been waiting for Psycho. I haven't really mentioned her because, you know, I, I, I know how Sheeta works. I know he was weaving things together and that Psycho would get her play soon enough. I was like, I've just been waiting for it. I've been waiting for it. I was just like, I remember this blue haired girl who was, who was dreading work from the first chapter. Uh, where is she at? Where is she at? I always questioned it every chapter. I was like, they're, they're supposed to be a final Quinky Squad member. When are they going to introduce her? Ever since we got, you know, that one young jump cover page that showed, you know, basically the Quinky Squad on the front teasing Tokyo Glory. I was like, all right, she's going to show up soon enough. And we get her this chapter. No Juzo this chapter. No resolution with Toka and Renji and, and you know, Kaneki. I don't care because Psycho made this chapter this shit. Psycho is Psycho. I'm calling it right now. I don't know how B she is. I don't know if she's OP, if she goes in or not yet. It really honestly doesn't matter to me because I love her for her personality alone and her character design. But if she goes in, that's going to be the icing on the cake. That's going to be the icing on the cake. And I have a good, I'm very inclined to believe that she can go in. I'm very inclined. I, I will say right now she is Psycho in terms of Quinkies putting Sasaki aside. And yes, you can argue Uriye is a beast. Uriye is a beast when it comes to, to combat, as we've seen so far. He was standing toe-to-toe -to -toe with Nishiki for, for quite some time. And when he wasn't, he bit the fuck out of himself so he could get some, a power boost. So, dude goes in. Same with Shirazu. Um, but I see Psycho on, on that rank 2 investigator status as being at least on par with Shirazu. So I know she's going to go in. I know she's going to go in, even though she doesn't want to. I, I can respect that. I love the neat otaku aspect to Psycho's character. I'm just like, finally a character that, you know, I can vibe with. Finally a character in the Quinkies that I can just hands down be like, this is my favorite. This is my favorite. And don't get me wrong. Like I said, I love Shirazu. I love all about the money. Such a genuine, straightforward personality. He's kind of stupid. Doesn't matter to me. He's got that beast character design with the shark teeth, all gold, all chrome. I, I fucks with Shirazu. I fucks with the homie Shirazu. Everybody knows how I feel about Udie. He's a prick. He's an asshole. He's selfish. I don't like his demeanor. I don't like how manipulative he is. The only thing is, I do respect, you know, how hard he's willing to go for his goals. That's all. And how hard he goes in battle. Those are the things I respect about him. I, I don't like him, but I will respect that. Because dude bit the shit out of himself to go in. And, you know, he has a goal. He set that goal. And I, I seriously, like I've been saying in my past reviews, it's going to drive him down a path of darkness. It definitely will drive him towards a path of darkness. You even see last chapter, or I believe it was last chapter, maybe the chapter before, where he was, you know, it was last chapter, he was questioning, you know, the doctor trying to find out about how the Quinkies work and, you know, the F phases and everything like that, and the tears, and trying to gain more power. He's power hungry, and I see that leading him down a dark path, but as long as he maintains the goal of wanting to be in the S3 squad, you know, I don't see him going too far, but he's definitely going to be one of the first Quinky members that, you know, pushes through that threshold from being more of that on that human side to getting more of that ghoul aspect to him um, 
becoming more along the lines of, you know, a half ghoul such as Kaneki. And I think it's either going to drive him mad, drive him to a dark path where he becomes somewhat evil and antagonistic, something Urie is going to have big play later on in the future, but I still think he's a prick. And then Mitsuki, don't get me wrong, I love Mitsuki. She's a deep character. Yes, I said she, not he, because I still see her as a woman. I, I don't care. I, I don't discriminate based on transgender shit. I, I love her. That has no, no factor into why she's not my favorite. She's a deep character. Um, and that whole backstory and everything like that. I, I like her. I like Mizuki. And I can't wait to see her develop. But at the, at the moment, she's just weak. And, you know, I don't really vibe with her too much because she's really shy. Like, I, I, I like her. I like her, but psycho. Psycho for number one. That, that I'm number one fan of Psycho right now. I, I don't give a fuck. She's just so amazing. You just see her. They burst in on her. She's playing PSP, just posted up, like, not trying to do shit. She's li she's living comfortably off the quinky, you know, setup package. She doesn't have to go outside, live her comfortable, neat lifestyle in the apartment. And then Uriye basically manipulates her based on the contract and everything into coming back. And I, I have a little bit of a problem with this whole contract thing because... On the one hand, I'm very inclined to believe, especially with people like Akira, who have a lot of clout in the CCG at this point, that they will honor that contract and they will take care of the Quinkies regardless of what happens. Um, I am inclined to believe what Uriye says about that. But at the same time, I believe that even the higher-ups just don't give a shit about them and only see them as tools to further their goals and, you know, f fight against al Giri, fight the ghoul epidemic and everything like that. So, I, I, I don't know. I'm having a hard time reconciling what Uriye says about this contract. I, I, I have a hard time believing it. I'm skeptical. I'm real skeptical. I think the CCG would toss them to the wayside if they became useless. Um, so in that way, like, Uriye's statement to me makes more sense that, you know, that she's not pulling her weight. So you got to come back to work, Psycho, because they're, they're, there's talk that they're going to get rid of you. And, yeah, that, that makes sense to me. But... I, I'll buy by the contract for now because just with people like Akira, who genuinely cares about her subordinates, genuinely cares about them, I don't see them screwing them over too hard. So I'll buy by for now. But just like so kawaii, fucking a little bit of fan service here and there, just the personality I love, and she's like, all right, I'm gonna try my best, I'm gonna work hard. Um, and then basically wake everybody wakes up next morning, go meet with Juzo's squad, and she just sleeps in. She she doesn't wake up. Uh, and, you know, Shidasu has to go, like, bur burst down her door and try and wake her up, which it's not gonna work. Sasaki says time and time again, she's like, I, I tried. I know how she is. It's not happening, bro. We, we should just go. He's like, no, I'm the new squad leader. I'm gonna go in. And it was so funny, that whole dynamic when, you know, they were first talking to her, and you know, she was talking to Uriye like squad leader and then he was basically like, no, I'm not squad leader anymore. He's like, what happened? You got voted at Shirazu. He's just kind of chilling over there. It was great. But you see Uriye still scheming. Like I said, he just do anything to get to his goal. Scheming. Like, I'm going to use Psycho, destabilize the Quinky squad, destabilize, you know, Shirazu's reign as squad leader and get my position back. Then, you know, Sasaki can't say shit to me. And I'm just like, yo, Uriye is such a fucking asshole. Like, he's such an asshole. I mean, so manipulative, but at the same time, I can, at least he does anything. He goes scrapes and claws for his goal. So that's the only thing I can respect about him. And then, other aspects of this chapter. Um, last week, forgot to mention Juzo's new look. Basically, it seems as though the, um, Ishida has taken his look with the, you know, the black hair and everything from the, the Joker one-shot and transition it over here. And it makes sense to me, it really does. Um, time skip, Juzo maturing, get him that black hair beast look. I, I I can't wait, I'm hyped because, you know, Suzia, no matter what, one of my favorite characters. And I actually really fuck, I, I loved his white hair, I really did, but I fuck with this black hair look. I really, really do, it's dope. It's so dope. Um, and, you know, Fiendish and a couple of other people have been talking about um, one of my subs and some other people online some other videos and stuff like that have been talking about you know Juzo's relationship to this Nutcracker case and I can't believe it slipped by me but I went back and looked at the, at the chat and there's no definitive hints but still this theory makes perfect sense to me and I think it's accurate and this is definitely something Ishida would do in that the Nutcracker ghoul this fucking fiendish lady who's going around stomping people in the nuts um, was the one that basically fucked up Juzo when, you know, back in his youth when Madame A, you know, had captured and sold him off and everything like that and the whole thing with the 
you, you feel me, you feel me. So I believe Juzo has a tie with this Nutcracker. It's only fitting that he's on this case. He probably, you know, has recognized it in and of himself and he's trying to get some vengeance. So that's dope. That's really dope. And then when we meet Juzo's like second in command, I forget his name. Um, he looks fucking ghastly though. He looks real ghastly. Um, but we meet him, he's kind of discussing things. He's, he's saying basically that, you know, the gourmet club and everything like that, that, you know, we know Kaneki just went in on them. He was done with them. Um, that they're back up and running. I doubt that Tsukiyama had a hand in bringing that up, but he mentioned, he references Madam A as well. Um, I, I, it could very well be for the gourmet club to just go from decimated to back up and running. While, while there has been a good amount of years that's passed, it, I'm sort of sort of inclined to believe that Tsukiyama has a hand in it. I'm sort of inclined to believe Tsukiyama has a hand in it. But at the same time, like, I, I just, I don't know how broken he is at this point, but I want to see my boy Tsukiyama soon. I need to see him. I need to see him. I need to see, you know, we got, we got everything uh, with Chie and, and whatever, and the other dude, um, purple hair, hair guy, Kanye, or whatever his name was, um, can't remember at this point, but I, I, I need to see them. And it would be interesting if he has a hand in this gourmet club, if, and if the, the Nutcracker rule is related to this as well, but my reasoning to see that Tsukiyama would go back to that would just be that now that he's lost, you know, his life's goal, the most palatable dish that he's ever come across, which turned into like a twisted love affair that he just generally started to have, like I still believe to this day Tsukiyama generally cared about Kaneki. Um, now that he lost that, he's gone, he's gone back to hunting for something else like just as good. Um, but at the same time, he was so broken that I, I don't know if he would. this would be his next step. I really doubt it would be his next step. So it's, I have a hard time reconciling that. I'm not sure where I, where I sit on that yet. And then the last big thing with this chapter was how they, Ishida did everything with the Toka and Renji stuff. I love how it just kind of cuts from the beginning, them going back, and then by the end of the chapter, kind of fades back into the flashback of when they're at the shop, when they're at Reed. And... Renji, yo, it's it's undeniable. I already know they know, but it's undeniable that they know. Like Renji just fucking sits down, sits at the table, is just peering at Sasaki, and Sasaki's like, um, can I help you? And he's just like, nah, fucking gets up. Like classic Renji, dude. Classic Renji, just silent as fuck. Just pours the coffee, slaps it down. He's just like, ah, ah. he's he just basically confirms it right there. He's like, that's definitely Kaneki. Uh, what this dude's doing? We can't make a scene here, of course. But we we need to figure this out. That that's basically how I see Renji's thought process. And Toka knows as well. It was really fucking endearing. Just you know, Sasaki, the tears just start to flow after he tastes the coffee. It's, it's the nostalgia of Kaneki, like just hitting him, seeing Renji, seeing Toka. He just can't suppress the raw emotion of something that was so integral to his life, to people that were so integral to his life. And you see Toka just hand him the handkerchief and everything like that. And I'm just like, yeah, she knows as well. She clearly knows, and I, I never doubted that she knows, but that's basically, this. that scene is just an, isn't enough confirmation for me. And I know they're not going to do anything there. I know they have no plan, but I want to see where we go from here. I want to see how they're going to reconcile this. I want to see discussion between Toka and Renji outside of this um, to see how it's going to progress. And then as always, still so much to see. Still want to get back to the Algi of the hierarchy and how it stands at this point now that we've seen Ayato and Hinami. Uh, everything like that. I want to see everybody else, you know, Tatara, Noro, um, Takatsuki, the one I, I, I haven't seen her in a minute. I want to see what's up with Dr. Kano, his experiments. I want to see Piero. I still need Tsukiyama. And of course, I still need Jide. So still a lot of stuff I want to get, but we're getting a lot of progression. Seeing Psycho this chapter, just, oh my god, Psycho is Psycho. I'm going to keep chanting that until I see her go in, and if she proves to be Psycho, that's going to be my official little line for, for fucking Psycho. I, I will be so sad if she goes out of point. I will be so sad because she's amazing. But let me know your thoughts on this chapter. Um, what do you think about the relationship between Juzo and Nutcracker? Um, what you think is going to happen with the progression in terms of, you know, Renji and Toka. Um, is Psycho a beast? Can Psycho go in? We won't know until she actually gets her ass out of bed. <laughs> but it's all good as long as you stay home and play video games, in my opinion. I'll still love the chapter. Um, so great chapter of Ree. Really good chapter. I really enjoyed it. I cannot wait to see Juzo next week. I, I, I know we're going to see Juzo next week. We have to see Juzo next weekend. I'm hype. I'm hype. I'm so hype. So let me know your thoughts. And, you know, take care. Leave a like, uh, comment, subscribe. 
uh, if you, you know, you're not subscribed and everything like that. And, you know, that's pretty much it. I'm out. Peace.